Namaskar. On this week long celebration of Auroville Festival, marking the occasion of birthday of our Holy Mother and it's the Auroville Township. I would like to thank and congratulate everyone associated with this festival, especially the Secretary of Auroville Foundation, Tirumati Jayanti Ravi, who has been driving this very, very passionately. Friends, this city of Orville, may call it village of Orville, is essentially a dream of mother to practically realize the vision of Sri Aurobindo, the vision of creating a set of people who are committed to the service of the Divine Consciousness. Sri Aurobindo, we all know that his spiritual accomplishments he himself did not move around propagated unlike many sages and seers of this country. Towards the later part of his life, he actually secluded himself into intense meditation, which eventually led to the realization of the vision, which was passed on to mother and she wanted to create a small township which would be a manifestation of that vision. That's why the charter of Orville, the first and foremost charter is that Orville belongs to humanity, but to live in Orville, one must be a willing servitor of the Divine Consciousness. Rest the three charters, it just follows from it. The question is, what is that Divine Consciousness that Rishi Sri Arvinda had realized and Mother talked about? Even Rishi Arvindo talked about it in his seminal works. Is the Divine Consciousness going to temples, mosques, church, synagogues and going through the rituals of religion? No. This is an a spiritual exercise. And on this there has been at least I have seen and I have realized that there is a considerable degree of confusion in understanding that divine consciousness. Many people say that Sri Aurobindo's divine consciousness, the concept of divine consciousness, the vision of divine consciousness in the realm of spirituality is as complex as the Einstein's theory of relativity in the domain of physical science, talking about the curvature of time and space. Nevertheless, what Sri Aurobindo said when he talked about his vision is, is actually what our rishis and seers of Bharat had realized and articulated at the time of Rig Veda. It's time is different, different people, different estimations. Some people would say it was about 18,000 years ago, but 
But there is a general consensus that this was 6,500 years before the common era. The rishis of Bharat had realized three fundamental truths. One, there is a creator. There is one creator who has created this entire creation. Second, is the organic unity of the creation, the oneness of creation. Beneath the apparent mind-numbing diversity, no two entities, no two persons, no two things are exactly alike. Look at the human beings, seven billion and odd, no two are alike. And similarly in the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, with all these diversities, they are all integrally connected with each other. It's like millions of trees, uh, leaves on a tree. Each leaf is different from the other, and yet they are all organically connected with the tree. The tree of creation is one. And from this, a corollary goes, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, that the world is a family. The world is a family is not a political statement. It is an a spiritual realization, which our sages and seers have articulated at least eight and a half thousand years ago. So one creator, organic oneness of creation. And the third truth was that this creation is governed by immutable laws. It's not arbitrary, days and nights change of seasons, all the acts of creation are governed by immutable laws. Now this realization of these three fundamental truths was called Ritka Siddhant, principles of Rit, and that is why we got Rig Veda. But this was, this realization was, this a spiritual realization was limited to the sages and seers and those people, those who could evolve themselves to that plane where they could appreciate it. Now, Rishi Sri Arvind, in his lifetime, he witnessed two devastating war in the world. Millions and millions of people across the world perished. He also witnessed that how humanity, they have acquired enormous destructive power. It was during that time that atomic explosion had happened and millions of people have perished. Unprecedented power at the disposal of human being. He witnessed an anarchy of ideas and ideologies. People in the world segmented in uh, along various ideas and ideologies, socialism, communism, capitalism, Fabian socialism, democracy, liberal democracy, all kinds of. And such a heavily divided community of human beings in the world, equipped with such devastating power, destructive power. The question that Rishi Arvindo was confronted with was, is self-destruction the destiny of humanity? Is it going to be over now? Going to destroy them? People are, humanity is going to destroy itself? Is this the destiny? And then he got the realization that no, it is not the destiny. Because in the process of evolution, the human beings are yet one stage short of its eventual evolution, complete evolution. Humans have reached the third stage today. A stage when the matter, which is called jad, when chetan, the consciousness creeps into some, some matter, the jiv emerges, life emerges. Jad, jiv. And when the consciousness, the reasoning, the manas, it gets infused into that Jew that became humans. 
a thinking element, a thinking creature, creature with mind, with intellect. And this intellect, which is essentially what is called Adi Bhatik Buddhi, this intellect which is rooted in the understanding around the Panch Bhuta, the five great elements, it is essentially limited. It is not complete. Any knowledge, any understanding reached out of only this Panch Bhuta, the Adi Bhatik Buddhi, is not a complete knowledge, is complete Gyan. The a step above what is Sambuddhi is a, a spiritual experience, Adhyatmik Anubhav. Sahaj Gyan, what is called in our text, it is Sahaj Gyan. It is not based on calculation of mind. And this Sahaj Gyan was revealed to our Rishis about eight, 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 eight and a half thousand years ago, which was articulated in Rig Veda. But it was limited to a select few who could reach that level of evolution. It was not the mass that could reach up to that level of evolution. And Rishi Arvind, he thought that the next destiny is of human being is to reach that level of super consciousness. Jad, matter, infused with consciousness is jiv, life. Consciousness with my intellect is humans, manas. When manas evolves to next level, what is called ati manas, when it fuses with a spirituality, then mano becomes mahamano. Now in the age of, in the Vedic period, mahamanos were those rishis, those sages, those who reached that stage. Because when you reach that stage, you see the unity of the entire creation. Then to say that Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the people around the world, all are a part of a family, is not just an intellectual or a political statement. It is a very, very simple, it is Sahaj Gyan. You are able to relate yourself with others. And then the differences, the Anarchy of ideas and ideologies dissolve. It's like a light falling on darkness. Darkness disappears the moment light falls. Sri Aurobindo was of the view that this vision, if it can be realized by a set of people, because he thought that this level, according to him, this next level, which is the ultimate level of evolution, is not going to be automatic. It has to be engineered. This transformation, this final leap of Mano becoming Mahamano, is to be engineered. And for that, a set of people with a similar orientation, similar a spiritual orientation, they come together and they practice, they work towards creating a community of Mahamanos. This was mother's dream behind creating Auroville. That Auroville will be a place where people who are of a similar disposition, a spiritual disposition would come together. That is why the first condition in the Auroville Charter is to be, one must be, a willing servitor of divine consciousness. This consciousness which sees divinity in all. And so one relates with other, irrespective of race, caste, creed, geography, religion, everything. This is Bhartiya Sanatan Dharma, Sanatan Darshan. Once this community starts building itself. It is a continuous exercise. The people have to continue practicing. Practicing to reach that level of evolution. That manas becoming ati manas. 
the consciousness becoming super consciousness and Manu becoming Mahamanu. And that way, the super conscious Mahamanu is also part of this Jad Chetan and Manas are within that. As for example, we are human beings thinking equipped with intellect, but we are also matter. We also have Chetana, but we also have intellect. The next level that comes will also have all the three elements, but that level of super consciousness will be so transformative that this world become this world will become the creation will become a paradise. And that is the ultimate destiny of humanity. That is why he said that it is it has to be a continuous exercise. The life itself is a yoga. Yoga is essentially what is called actually sensualist sans yoga. You know, it, there are two ways of looking at things. The Western, you know, epistemology believes in analysis, vislation, where you break it everything into parts and then you analyze it, try to understand. Bharatiya way of looking at things has been what is called translation, syn synthesis. You look into the totality. When you look into totality, we all know that whole is more than sum of parts. So this, this yoga is essentially to look at the things in totality, the comprehensive view of creation. And for that comprehensive view, evolution of intellect to the level of superconsciousness, that a spiritual realization is a must. Now, what is the role of government of India in this? When this uh, township was created, it was thought that the people coming to it would be able to create it themselves. There is no need for any external intervention. It shouldn't be. But somehow, we all being human beings, we are trapped in our own desires, our own egos, our own, you may call it weakness or human frailties. That, that anarchy which Sri Aurobindo had seen outside the world, it has started you know, manifesting in that small community of people here as well. And so there was intervention. Emergency ordinance came, regulations came. Finally, uh, Orville Foundation Act came. Ideally, it should have been by the people, by the Orwellian themselves. And it has to be by the Orwellian themselves, there's no doubt about it. What is the role of the government, the government of India? The government of India is is only acting as a catalyst because it's a half a century down the line that we have yet to see that vision. That community of people, a small number of people, willing servitor of the divine consciousness, seeing oneness in all, proving themselves as an example to the rest of the world that look here on earth there is a small patch and a set of people who see each other as one. That would be a message to the whole world. That would spread the sense of that is Mahamano to the rest of the humanity. And that would be the ultimate destiny and that would save the world. But it didn't happen. Unfortunately, we have seen a large number of groups, factions, now these are all at a very subordinate level. It is not the level which Sri Aurobindo had uh, imagined or visioned. We are still trapped at, at a very, very subordinate level. It has to evolve. But this evolution cannot be done by the government. What government of India can do? Government of India has to do and is, will, will do the physical aspect of it because mother had given a design what the township should be like. That design, to see that that design, what we call town planning, is to manifest, is to be, is to, is, is to be created. That is the physical infrastructure of that township where the potential Mahamanos would be sitting, dwelling on that issue of 
going up to the higher level of consciousness and setting an example for the rest of the world. But while realizing the vision of Sri Aurobindo, I and Mother also give an example to the rest of the world. So the government of India is only doing that part. It cannot do the spiritual part of it. It is beyond government, beyond any agency. But at the same time, it has to ensure that the physical infrastructure which the mother had envisioned according to her design, it has to come up. And I'm glad the process has begun. I am very hopeful that soon we will see the township manifesting in its physical domain. And the rest is a continuous process. It's a process that will continue until the people living there, they reach that stage. And having reached that stage, they start spreading their radiance across the world. I wish all of you all the best. Thank you very much. Namaskar.